Welcome to the Autosys training video. By the end of this video, you will learn about load balancing for job scheduling and how the workload automation developers can balance the job execution load using the available load balancing options in Autosys. To enhance the learning experience, we will use examples of a fictitious bank called the Hedmeral Bank and demonstrate how to implement load balancing policies for job executions in Autosys to optimize performance. Before we go through the Hedmeral requirements and challenges they face, let's understand what load balancing is and why it is important to have load balancing policies in place for job executions. Load balancing in job scheduling determines the order in which the scheduler executes the jobs on real and virtual machines. Load balancing enables the workload distribution to multiple machines based on their capabilities to ensure efficient and reliable job processing. Load balancing also restricts the number of jobs that run concurrently on a machine to prevent resource contention and ensure optimal performance. Autosys implements load balancing for job scheduling by defining the machine and job attributes in the machine and job definitions, or using resources. Load balancing using machine and job attributes. In Autosys, you can enable load balancing by defining certain attributes in the machine and job definitions. When you define jobs, you assign them to real or virtual machines for execution. A real machine represents a single network host with the Autosys system agent installed. A virtual machine represents one or more real machines. Machines in Autosys are defined either through the command line interface, CLI, or the web UI. While creating or updating the machine definitions, you can specify the machine capability using machine maximum load and factor attributes. Max load. The max load attribute defines a machine's maximum load in load units. Load units are the arbitrary values that are user-defined. The max load indicates the machine's relative processing capacity. This attribute is valid in a real machine definition or component machines defined as virtual machines. Factor. The factor attribute determines the relative processing power of a machine. The relative processing power of a machine is calculated as the product of available CPU cycles and specified factor value. In the job definition, developers can specify the load units the job requires for execution on the specified machine using the job load attribute, and the execution priority of the job in the job queue using the priority attribute. Lower the value higher the priority. If the value for priority is set to default zero, the job runs immediately and is not considered for load balancing. Based on the attribute values defined in machine and job definitions, the scheduler creates queuing policies for job execution. The scheduler places the jobs in the job queue per the defined job priority. Then reads the load units specified for the job and checks if the machine has specified load units available. It executes the job if the load units are available per the defined job priority. If the load units are unavailable on the machine, the scheduler places the jobs in the queue and changes the job status to queue wait. If sufficient machine load is available for low priority jobs, the scheduler runs them on that machine. If you want to run a job immediately that is in queue wait status, use the send event command and send the change priority event to change the job's priority to zero. Machine method. You can also enable load balancing for a virtual machine with multiple real machines by defining a machine method attribute in a virtual machine definition. The machine method attribute specifies the load balancing method the virtual machine must use to allocate the load on real machines. Load balancing using resources. Autosys also supports the virtual resources usage to enable load balancing during job scheduling and execution. You may combine resources and virtual machines for basic throttling and serialization during job execution. Using the resource and job load attributes in jobs allows you to further qualify a machine for load balancing. The first machine that satisfies the resource requirements will be chosen. When using job load attribute for a job, it's important to specify a non-zero value within the range of the maximum load defined for the machine where the job will be executed. 
Now that we have learned about the different load balancing options available in Autosys, let's examine a challenge that Hedmeral Bank faces and provide a solution using resources as a load balancing option. The workload automation team at Hedmeral Bank runs end-of-day settlement and data backup processing jobs daily after banking hours. The end-of-day settlement process aggregates transactions, reconciles accounts, and settles financial transactions for the day. The data backup process backs up critical data such as transaction logs, customer records, and system configurations to ensure data integrity and disaster recovery readiness. These two jobs must be mutually exclusive. They must never run in parallel as they access and update the same database tables to prevent concurrent execution and avoid potential data corruption, inconsistencies, and performance issues. To address this challenge, the workload automation developers at Hedmeral Bank decided to use resources to enable load balancing during job executions. Let's enter our training environment and implement load balancing for job executions using resources. For this demo, we assume that the environment settings for Autosys are already in place. To create a resource using a Jill script, connect to the Autosys server running on a Linux operating system and open the primary and secondary shell prompts. In the primary shell prompt, enter Jill and press enter. The Jill interface opens. Define the resource using the insert resource subcommand and provide the values using the relevant attributes. Provide a unique name for the resource. Specify the resource type as renewable. Provide the resource amount as 50. Here resources are not assigned to any specific machine, which means it is a global resource. Now type exit and press enter to create the resource. The Jill interactive mode ends and the resource object is created in the database after the Jill interpreter validates it. The resource object returns the exit code zero if the resource creation is successful. Let's assign this resource to two contained jobs of a box job for enabling load balancing in the primary shell prompt. Open a text file using a text editor like VI to update the contained jobs with resource details. In the first job, assign the resource using the resource attribute. Specify the resource quantity as 40 using the quantity attribute. Set the free attribute value as Y to return the renewable resource to the resource pool after the job execution is complete. Similarly, in the second job, specify the resource quantity as 40 using the quantity attribute. Set the free attribute value as Y to return the renewable resource to the resource pool after the job execution is complete. Open the Jill interface Provide the updated job definition file names as input and press enter to save the job definitions. The scheduler creates the jobs and returns the exit code zero, indicating that the job definitions are successfully updated. To monitor the job event logs, in the secondary shell prompt, run the autosyslog command with option E and manually start the box job using the send event with appropriate options in the primary shell prompt. If the start conditions are met, the jobs start. You may notice that the autosyslog command utility displays the event log showing the current status of contained jobs as starting in the secondary shell prompt. The first job status changes to running if the 40 units of resources are available in the resource pool. The resource count in the pool comes down to 10. The second job status changes to the resweight state as 40 resources are unavailable in the pool. As soon as the first job completes execution with a success state, the scheduler releases the 40 consumed resources and the resource count increases back to 50 in the pool. The second job consumes 40 resources and changes the status from resweight to running. The second job completes with a success state and returns an exit code zero. Thank you for watching the training video.